Welcome to Gary, Indiana. I have heard endless stories about Gary, Indiana from people who have passed through and people who have never been, but almost everyone seems to agree that it is a sad shell of what it once was, an American tragedy. And today, we take a look at perhaps this city's only mall, the Village Shopping Center. Join me for a tour of this long-faded city icon of commerce. The Village Shopping Center had roots going all the way back to the 50s, reportedly opening in 1955 in a cornfield. This was a time when the interstate was not conceived at all, and freeways were a rare sight. The village would at least be positioned for the future of Interstate 94, with SS Kresge, JC Penney, and Kroger as the anchors. The village was sure to secure the needs of Gary, Indiana, even more so with an early edition of Montgomery Ward in 1958. What people won't tell you is that Gary was already on the decline by this point, and the village was an effort to keep retail sales within city limits. At first, things seemed to be going well, with housing developments even springing up around the village. The mall managed to survive for about 20 years before the decline picked back up. Unfortunately, the village's history is muddied and difficult to dig up. Only the locals know the concrete dates. I do not know if that guy is homeless or not. But I will say, this is the first time I've seen someone just passed out in the mall floor. Gary was going down in flames as heavy manufacturing, steel especially, either relocated elsewhere or outsourced to other countries. Those with money would flee Gary for better prospects elsewhere, while the poor were left to pick up the pieces. Many are quick to blame White Flight as the sole killer of Gary, and while statistics do reflect this, the big picture shows that the decline of the steel industry, among other major employers, played a greater role. While steel manufacturing is still going strong in the area, it is a mere shell of its former self. The village attempted to keep itself fresh as it adapted to changing markets, trying to keep its anchors occupied. None of the original anchors were present by the 90s. Goldblatt's would come into the scene before departing again, and it was a similar story with U.S. factory outlets, A.J. Wright, an extremely short-lived Ames, and even an Aldi. Not even Marshalls could hold out, only lasting eight months between 2011 and 2012.
As of September 2021, there is little reason left to go to the village, with just a rainbow, a dentist, and a few small businesses hanging on for life at this mall. However, one tenant of note is Chuck Wheeler's Vienna Beef. This is the only place to eat at the village, unless you count the old McDonald's outside. But it is a highly rated hot dog stand known for Polish sausage. So if there's one reason for anyone to go here, it would be for Chuck Wheeler's. I don't get paid to mention that, but by all means, give them a try. If I can get in and out of Gary unscathed, then you can too. This mall is... something else. It's a very strange and quirky place, even for a front-facing mall that wraps partially around the parking lot. But to think that this place was, even briefly, a powerhouse for retail in Gary? I mean, you had JCPenney, Kresge, Montgomery Ward. And if you really want to step back in time, someone uploaded a video of the village on opening day. That is footage from around the 50s. You would never guess that was Gary, Indiana, especially when you see what's come of it now. And speaking of that video, it is worth mentioning that this enclosed corridor was not original to the mall. I don't know when it was added in, but I'm sure this was done for reasons of comfort, considering how harsh the winters can get around the Great Lakes. That's a scene I think sums up just about everything in Gary. Empty stores as far as the eye can see, along with someone down on their luck sleeping in the corridor. In fact, while we continue this tour, why don't we talk about Gary? Gary is supposed to be a big city, or at least a big suburb built for hundreds of thousands of people. The infrastructure is meant to handle those hundreds of thousands of people. However, Gary only has about 60, maybe 70,000 people to its name. All the traffic you see on the freeways in Gary has not a damn thing to do with the city. Almost all of that is traffic going in and out of the Chicagoland region of Illinois. And Chicago is rife with its own problems too. But Gary, in particular, seems to be one of those cities that nobody wants to talk about. Everyone knows about Detroit and its suburbs which are turning back into forests block by block. You can see that happening in Gary too. Everyone knows about the crime of Southside Chicago, and while Gary is nowhere near that extreme, the overall crime rate is 80% higher than the national average, with violent crime being 40% higher than the national average. You can check those numbers yourself. Meaning that there is a risk you could get attacked or shot in Gary, but property crime is huge and that's what's pumping all the numbers. Now, for all the hope I have for malls, I'm not sure we can really do anything about the village. We would have to focus on cleaning up Gary first before tending to this mall. And I don't even know where to begin with that, because it seems everything is wrong with this city, from the crime, to property values, to household income, even the elected officials are spoken of rather poorly here. And on top of that, the infrastructure designed for hundreds of thousands of people is crumbling as we speak. I don't even know where to begin on this, and all I can do is bring awareness to the city. How do we fix a place like Gary? Thanks for having me, Gary, Indiana. And until next time, this is Doomy Grunt wishing you and the village farewell, and may you find your way once more.